most of the, the, the platforms for shared knowledge these days, uh, they don't have mechanisms uh, that would allow people that live in poverty and people that are excluded uh, to be actively empowered uh, to, to be developing and, uh, and sharing the knowledge from their perspective. Uh, so you have very democratic platforms that everybody can add to. Uh, however, people living in exclusion, uh, uh, they have to be proactively involved uh, on that. So for me, the main challenge is how we overcome that power inequity uh, on access to technology uh, and also access to such platforms in a way that uh, excluded groups that have very important process of local knowledge generation uh, to also uh, be part of such platforms uh, and to bring this bottom up uh, knowledge development uh, to the fore. If we start doing such process in a more consistent way, I think uh, we have a fundamental democratization of knowledge development. Uh, and you also have uh, a process in which you change the power equation. Uh, the knowledge of people living in poverty and exclusion uh, gets valued, uh, gets understood. Uh, but more importantly, the knowledge that one community has developed to deal with its own situation of poverty and, uh, and inequality can be used by another community in a similar situation. Uh, so therefore, uh, you can have a much faster uh, knowledge curve, if you want, uh, through which different communities across the world uh, can learn from each other and can advance their struggles for rights uh, and the alternatives, the local alternatives, in a much faster pace. Uh, so I believe that benefit would be crucial. Uh, on top of uh, the overall change on power, because we all know that knowledge is power uh, and having uh, poor people and poor communities owning their knowledge uh, and sharing that is a value in itself.